Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1171. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about why the bearishness is so high, it's actually bullish. Well, looking at the sentiment, the market sentiment, how are people feeling? Are they expecting markets to go up? Are they expecting markets to go down or are they neutral? Well, the amount of people that expect the markets to go down has not been this high in the last year, except at the end of December last year. So at the end of December last year, the level of people bearish or negative on the market was 47 to 52% during a couple of weeks around Christmas time. And right now, the percentage of people who are bearish or negative on the market, think it's going lower, is 48.9%. And the indicators are showing that there is high fear in the markets. So typically, when we get to an extreme like this, it's an opposite indicator, an inverse indicator, if you will. That means that if everyone is leaning toward one side of the boat or standing on one side of the boat, usually the boat goes the other way. For as long as I've been investing, that's how it's happened. Now, I know that that's not enough to make you really feel good about the direction of the market. So let's talk about some other underlying factors. We've had a crazy year this year. We've had interest rate hikes, a run on the banks, roaring inflation, and a Fed that just doesn't want to stop raising interest rates in spite of a banking crisis. With all that going on, last year and this year, many people felt that we were going to go lower than we did last October. Now, I thought we would bottom in the June dip, but we did go a little bit lower into September and then retest that in October. But from there, we had the strongest three-month rebound ever in stock market history. So it was worthwhile to stay invested and receive that nice rebound. Many people last year were predicting a recession or even a depression. I said, no, I didn't see a recession. Many people predicted the U.S. real estate market would crash last year, especially with Chinese real estate having issues and the whole Evergrande potential doomsday scenario coming to America. But that never happened. And people were pounding their fists that that was absolutely going to happen. It didn't happen. Many people talked about inflation, how it was going to take off, have hyperinflation, runaway inflation. I said, no, inflation was going to be trending lower. So far it has. In the last report coming down from 6.4% to 6% and continuing down from 7.4% before that. Now it seems like the doom and gloom is so thick out there that a lot of talking heads are saying the market's absolutely going to fall apart. Here's why I don't think it's going to. When you look at a chart of the S&P 500, the stock market has already made higher lows. That means that the lows from last October have held and the stock market has moved higher and that higher move has moved higher again and provided what's called a higher low. So a low that's above the October low, which is a bullish sign. We also have the 50-day moving average above the 200-day moving average, which is a bullish sign. We have high levels of fear and about 50% levels of bearishness, which is a bullish sign. We even have cryptocurrencies running higher with our favorite cryptocurrency XRP on Tuesday up 28%. But here's why I think we're getting ready for a bull run because the bond market is telling us so. Once the Fed realizes the extent of the banking problems, and you see, I think Europe has much worse banking problems than the United States. I think Deutsche Bank has all kinds of issues. I think the Credit Suisse UBS buyout may not be able to happen because 
of the level of exposure of Credit Suisse, not only with short selling, but also bond portfolios underwater and also derivatives. That deal may never come together. And if it doesn't, that is going to send shockwaves through the markets. Not so much the stock market, but more the bond market. The bond market will see the value of bonds head higher and interest rates head lower. They move inversely to one another, as you know. So I believe the market will start to predict that the Fed will have to cut rates in the second half of the year because there is a lag effect I've been talking about. That lag effect takes time for the Fed raising interest rates to actually start to see a dramatic slowdown in the economy. I believe we're about to get that between now and maybe June. We're going to get that dramatic slowdown. And all of a sudden, the Fed is going to change its tune and realize, oh dear, we may have tightened too much. And the bond market trending interest rates lower is going to cause the stock market to shoot higher. Now, there's one other thing out there, and that is the whispers that people think while the BRICS nations have been joining together to produce a currency that is a world reserve currency in place of the dollar, and by the way, now 16 more countries want to join the BRICS nations, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, plus 16, and the Chinese yuan is now backed with gold, as basically the ruble is as well. The dollar was strengthening the last two years and peaked in October, right when the stock market bottomed. Now, since October, the dollar has been declining and the stock market has been going up. If the BRICS nations are successful in creating an alternative reserve currency, which they really are already a big part of the way there with the agreement to trade oil in something other than US dollars, then the dollar could continue to lose value, which will help the stock market rise. It also helps corporate profits as multinational corporations have to exchange foreign currency into a cheaper dollar, their profits get a tailwind and it gives them a boost. And that helps corporate profits, which will help the stock market go up. So for all these reasons, I see the stock market will surprise on the upside. This is something very few people expect, but it really looks all set up for the market to surprise everyone and head higher. This is something that can happen when currencies do have problems with value, like we've seen in Argentina and in other countries that lost value in their currency, their stock markets went up dramatically. So as your wealth mentor, I wanted you to know your opportunities for wealth building are looking good in spite of the widespread fear, uncertainty, and doubt that's out there. As I said a week ago, we had a buying opportunity and I told you right at the bottom where the buying opportunity was. The market's gone up since then and I believe it will continue to go up just like it always has when stock markets climb a wall of worry. That means you have to have fear in the market for the markets to go up. When everyone's overconfident that the market's going to go up, that's when it drops. But when the majority are fearful, that is when you get a rip-roaring bull market. And that is what I believe the next phase is. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available. And all of my podcasts are in my wealth mentoring library on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. And while you're there, you can sign up for my weekly newsletter so that you can get to financial freedom faster. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.